that's out of town because I'm always leaving town, you know. It's a cool little shack, but there's no coffee in my town that tastes as good. <laughs> we have another place called Summer Moon, which you've probably heard me talk about. And uh, they're really good. They have this moon milk, their own cream, sweet cream. And they put it in all their stuff according to the level that you love. I usually get a half moon, which is like I found the Yellow Dog Breve to be just like the half moon. Very close. And uh, that's been my favorite coffee for a while. But now this, this bad boy is very close to me. So I can get up in the morning and take a little drive. And have some coffee. Um, yeah. As usual, I get up in the morning. I'm very reflective. I just... I have singular brain most of the time I'm not a multitasker I uh, have something that I want to do and I usually am very 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 focused and um, obsessive even about that one thing until I do it so
to the exit. But it is a, uh, a very, um, a very, uh, interesting situation that I find myself in. New paths are afoot. And you ever get to the point in your life where you, where you just literally look around your town or your place and you just... situation, you ever been to where you just didn't like the place you were at, you just weren't satisfied, I mean, you try everything to be content, you try everything to change your heart about it, you pray, change my heart, God, you know, <clears throat> if this is it, help me feel different about it, and I did, I have this successful business, I prayed hard about, you know, wanting to stay here and having the tolerance to get through the fact that I don't like it, but, you know, who learned to love it? I'm here, I'm doing well, I have a place to work, I make steady money, it's consistent day after day, week after week, month after month, and uh, so it's all good, you can just, you know, fall in place, put your nose to the grindstone, work it, save some money. Do the things you like to do in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> like I look around and I, I'm in a small town. It's a lot of people would dream about living in an area like this, where when you look around, you don't see big giant buildings or you know everywhere is concrete blacktop. There's a city here. We have a brand new road I'm on, but I'm saying that I'm looking here and I can look for 30 miles and see nothing. Any which way I look, there's just, you know, hills and valleys. It's the hill country. So, your peace out here it is definitely a quieter existence and a, I'd say a safer existence. But still, I couldn't, I couldn't get my brain around it. When I finally did, when I finally said, okay, I'm going all in. I thought everything was working out in several areas of my life. I had this place and I said, I'm gonna bust that wall down, I'm gonna bust that wall down. I'm gonna throw chairs all the way down the one side. I'm gonna rebuild this thing. I'm gonna bring in barbers. I'm gonna treat them right and get them busy. an idiot asked my landlord for permission new landlord he had my old landlord cares he said I do whatever I want the new landlord uh, and I've known him for a while I sat him down and said hey this is what I want to do I decide to go all in here I'm just gonna do it I'm gonna go for it and uh, he said you can't do that don't tear these walls down these are gonna be my offices this, the rooms are perfect. I want to keep it just like this. And, you, you know, you could hear the whistle from my balloon being popped. <laughs> but, when he said that, it's like I immediately knew I was done with this town. I knew, immediately. So, it was not just a bubble burst. It was like he ate my lunch and popped the bag, you know. <sniffs> Sorry, fella. Sorry, your business is not as important as my business and vision. You're done. And anyone else would say, ah, let's get another place. Let's just get on the road here. No, that's not how it is here in this town. You don't just get another place. I came back to this town broke, credit ruined, financially basically done, divorced. I had nothing. COVID shut me down. I thought I was going to be living on the streets. I had nothing. And I had my shop just set up and I worked one day and I got shut down for COVID. And I thought, that's it, that's it. 
but over time I hung in there and I worked it up and I built it up once we opened up and, uh, and it went really good and now I have the busiest shop I ever have for myself and and he said no so I instantly knew that I was not going to be staying in this town and uh, I looked everywhere though, I, up and down every street. I talked to all, I know a lot of real estate agents and brokers, I talked to everybody, nobody could come up with a thing. Everybody I know that owns buildings, put the word out, yes, I need a place, I'm looking, I need a small place, I need something that's cheap, that's not gonna be very expensive, I need it to be on the, where people can see me. Nothing. And definitely nothing that I wouldn't have to qualify for and uh, and moving to another town close by is just like starting over. I came to the conclusion very quickly that I was going to be done here and I was moving on and the thing that I was going to do was move into this here van, Wilhelmina and I was going to start a YouTube channel and, and build it up and get to where I can keep going. And so it's been a long process, but the, but the new road, the new path is very close. The new start, the start of like a new chapter in my life is afoot and it's as close as I want it to be. It is June. We're in the beginning of June, and I was looking at uh, leaving ultimately at the latest in August. But as of now, I'm feeling like it could be sooner. So it could either be sooner or things end up there. But I have uh, a couple things I need to do with this van. She's gonna get her little oxygen leak or whatever fix so I can have some decent gas mileage still doing that the uh, yeah it's so insane the engine light comes on and then it goes off and it comes back on like after a whole day of it being off it'll come back on the next day I feel like it's fixing itself over and over like there's a leak there's not a leak there's a leak there's not a leak it's moving or something happening so I've got to get it fixed. It's got to happen. This is going down. I think my mechanic will do a smoke test or whatever, figure out how to, where the little, might be a cracked hose or something that's just getting pinched or whatever. Um, but it's got to happen. I fixed everything on this. I put every little new part, everything. There's never anything that's not a hundred bucks, even if it's a part this big. It's always hundred dollars, hundred twenty dollars, thousand dollars. Seriously. So my next purchases are more than that. The the rigged hitch is fifteen hundred. The uh, couple hundred dollars for the tow hitch, if unless I get it put on by somebody with the big ratchets. And um, then there's tires. That's eleven hundred dollars. Twelve hundred dollars. Then there's uh, whether or not I get another. Uh, can't afford another uh, battery, which I need. I have the EB700, and that is 700 watts, and it's great. It's great. Except when I have the 12 volt refrigerator freezer in here, my uh, Alpi Cool, it's 52 or 55, 55 cubic. It's a big thing. I a whole lot of food. It's great. I need it to run all the time. And uh, I need to use it. I can't. It's not a cooler. It's a refrigerator, and it needs to be on. And to run that, you got to have a power source that is going to keep going. You know. So I'm thinking that I've got the 700 watt. So I need a. a I think I'm needing a thousand or the 1200 watt. Because if I had the next one would be. Because I don't have a system in here. I don't have the things wired up and all the little components. And, underneath something you know the back there and with the with the deep cell batteries I don't have that I have uh, I have solar generators it's not a lot of room in this van and I know people have done it and they 
have the solar powers. Most people don't even have a 200 watt solar panel like I do, but I have a 200 watt solar panel, which is great because it's high. It'll it'll charge that battery pretty quick and keep it top, topped off. So I thought that the Blue Eddy has uh, they have one. It's like fifteen hundred dollars. I can't see spending another five thousand dollars before I leave. It's so much. But I have a. Uh, I have a max fan that's sitting in the box. That needs to be cut out. It's a 14 inch hole in the roof. But my brother-in-law is in California. He's got all the tools and he's great at that stuff. He said he would help me. So I gotta get to California for that. That's an awesome thing because I get to bring the thing with me and I have the reason to get out to California and, and get that done and have that max fan working. But that's gonna take another level of power and with the refrigerator so I have the refrigerator I run I run two fans right now but the max fan will be three because one's sucking out one's the others are blowing on me to try to keep me cool and uh the refrigerator the max fan the two other little fans which when everything's off and I'm just running both of those fans it takes two watts it could go all day and night for three four to five days and it would not take down if I was only running those it would probably be a lot longer than that but um, with the solar panel always plugged in it would never die with just those fans and the max fan could run like that as well on it if I had all the fans on one and then I used also the TV when I sparingly use it sometimes I want to watch the big, bigger screen it's like 21 inches or something right here you can see the back of it that's my skateboard there's the TV here um but it's um it the TV takes about 24 watts to run. I usually watch it for several hours. It doesn't take much of the battery. But every day with all this stuff running, the refrigerator, the max fan is going to be on a lot when I'm in here laying down. The two fans are always going when I'm in here laying down. The TV, charging my phone, all that stuff that I thought I'd just get another EB70 and have another 700 watts, but I know how this refrigerator runs, and one of those batteries is like if it was just that, it would be less than a day that it would run. So if it's an overcast day and the sun's not really out and it's not charging it, you know, I need a day or two. I need a I need enough room in that little pocket to have the chance for the sun to come out and charge it, you know. So I keep my uh, solar panel clean, I wipe it down, and uh, you know I do all the things. But this is all part and parcel to what's gonna happen next. And um, those are the only things. The battery, um, I need the extra power. But everything else I have, I have ample uh, of what I need. I have extra food. Uh, for you know the kind of stuff you want to have in case you can't get food the rice and beans and stuff I have all the spices I have uh, you know cans of things that I keep just in case ramen you know stuff that I don't eat every day I don't like to eat that kind of stuff but if you have to if you're gonna starve then you have then you have those kind of things and then ultimately um, you know my clothes my tools uh, all the little things and I will do a van tour. I hate saying that. Another van tour, woohoo. Uh, and I don't have even the coolest van uh, tour. I have a small build thing down the side with the TV, the wall for the TV. That's it, a little pull out counter, some storage in there, storage box on top, solar panel. Um, it's, it's something I'll show you all a little bit closer. You'll get a more intimate view of it. It is cool. You know, I had uh, Jake McCollum channel do a little video and that boosted my channel by like, you know, 200 uh, subscribers pretty quickly. So that was a great thing to meet Jake and I'd been following him and sub to him for a while. He's great, he does great videos. He's, he's a, he, he knows how to edit and really do the B-roll and have an interesting video. And he can make a video in 10 minutes, which apparently Vinny is incapable of doing 20 minutes here. Anyway, good to talk to you guys. The new path is afoot. There's lots of um, 
not bitterness, but I'm just, you know, you come to a point where you're down in a place and you just can't, you know, it doesn't matter if you're making a thousand dollars a day. It's, uh, you know, you're like, I'm out of here. I, I gotta go, you know? And, uh, so I'm going to be not making any money when I leave here. And a lot of people are saying, bring your tools, cut hair. Yeah, I get it. Uh, barbering is not the kind of thing that you, um, that you just set up somewhere and get a bunch of haircuts. People don't trust like that. Oh, there are people that say, oh, just give me a buzz cut. But I, yeah, I'm in a barber shop and I get like one buzz cut every couple months. Everyone wants a precise haircut. They want certain things. And to be successful in barbering, you need to be in one place long term. They get a haircut, they like you, they come back same place you can't move around they don't know where you're at they'll never come back they'll never see you find you look for you um you know random haircuts here and there hey you want to throw me some cash for a haircut i i made up my mind that i i will accept whatever somebody wants to gift me if i'm cutting somebody's hair um but i'm not asking for money and it, and i'm not trying to make barbering my way of living unless i get to a point where I have no choice. I have to work. Nobody's uh, nobody's uh, going to do that for me. Um, which is why I'm building the YouTube channel. Because my hope is to do it full time. My hope is to be able to keep doing it. And keep bringing you. Um, you know. Good edited stuff. It doesn't take a lot of support. To keep a single van lifer on the road. It really wouldn't. I mean, I've got enough subscribers right now that, you know, a small, buying me a cup of coffee, pretty much, would, every month, would, um, would send me everywhere. But I realize that there's, um, you know, only a small percentage of people that, that are willing to support channels, and it's all good. I'm not even there yet, so, when I do get on the road... When I leave this place, by the way, I have a buffalo on my wall in the shop. I have a very good friend who is a recording artist. It just dropped his new album. He's got a studio in Nashville that I visited when I was running through there. I've decided to store my buffalo head with him. He asked me if I would be willing to let him hang it on his wall in his studio until if I ever open another shop. And I said, absolutely, man, that would be great. So. He's going to come by tomorrow morning and pick uh, Biff up. So the first thing is coming down off the wall. And I look at that as a, as the start of things are coming down, things are going away. And um, that's exciting. That's very exciting. Symbolic of a new beginning and new pass. Y'all take care. Do all the good things. God bless.